So thickness of a dime. So good, you were close. Thickness of a dime. And then what do you think of for a meter? How high did we say a meter was on a normal everyday item? Um, let's see, somebody I haven't heard from. A doorknob? Yeah, the height of a doorknob, right? So your meter stick, probably you can picture a meter stick and that's fine. But if you think of the height of a doorknob, Right where you reach is a meter high, okay? Um, and then what about for a centimeter, right? What, yeah, Abby, what, do you, what did I say? Pinky. Yeah, like the tip of your pinky, all right? So the thickness of a dime to match a millimeter, thickness, or like the width of your pinky for a centimeter, and then we have our meter, and then um, basically the kilometer is kind of like from the old high school to State Route 19. Okay, that's kind of a good comparison. Um, we also said yesterday that the, the milliliter for liquids, right, liters deal with liquids, and if we're dealing with the small version, the milliliter, if we took the tip of this pipette, it's a milliliter, and if I had a square solid, or a square one by one by one centimeter cube, it would be the exact same volume as my one milliliter of liquid. So we have that relationship between liquids um, volume and solid volume. And that's really helpful when we talk about water displacement and using a, um, the volume of a liquid to find the volume of a weird shaped object that doesn't have a formula, All right? So those are kind of the, the highlights from yesterday. Um, all right, so this is picking up on slide number 25. 
And so we're kind of at the point where we know that we have our basis. We have the meter, the liter, the gram, the length, the volume, or the mass. From there, we use the exact same system. We just pick the base or the unit that we want. So if I'm measuring length, I would choose the meter. And I could put the kilometer, the hectometer, the decameter, the decimeter, the centimeter, or the millimeter. And we know that the prefixes have a value that go with them as well. And that's what we're going to look at more today. And prefix means before. So we know that the prefixes will always come before. So the meter, the liter, and the gram get those six prefixes put in front of them. And so we really have one system, but we can find kind of an infinite amount of um, data, or we can represent an infinite amount of data with those three bases and prefixes. And so we call this base on powers of 10, because you're gonna see that starting here at the far right, every position that you go up, you're basically increasing the place value by one or going up by a power of 10. Okay, we'll come back, we have a pretty cool song you'll like. Okay, so here's where what it kind of looks, putting it together. Here's all of our prefixes, and notice it says base unit. You'll hear me say base, you'll hear me say unit. Who remembers um, the, the abbreviation to help us remember these prefixes? Or that, that word trick? Drinking chocolate milk. Yeah, good. King Henry died unexpectedly drinking chocolate milk. K-H-D-U-D-C-M. K-H-D-U-D-C-M. And it's not something to memorize, but it's something that might kind of get stuck in your head. Like, I hear you guys um, getting all the Spanish stuff stuck in your heads all the time, like, and it's coming out, which is great, right? When it just kind of is sing-songy and rhymey, things like that, that that's a, why we use those tricks, because they do. They, they work. They stick that information in your head, and you don't even realize it's happening. Um, okay, so here's our prefixes. So kilo means 1,000, hecto 100, deca is 10. Um, the base unit is always a value of one. Now we're getting smaller than a one. So basically, if you look, it's like our decimal point is moving one position with each step. So we go from here down to 100, from 100 down to 10, from 10 down to one, from one, now we have 0.1. From 0.1, now we end up with 0.01. 0.01, now we end up with 0.001. If we get bigger, we're just moving the decimal back to the right. Okay. And so here's what it looks like together. The kilometer, the hectometer, the decameter. Okay. We can also, um, and again, they have capacity. We know that that's another word for volume. And here's the thing. There's a lot more prefixes than just the six that we're going to learn. As you get into chemistry in high school, you will see how many more we go up. So these are representing by exponents, right? So um, we have our base is like right here, whether it's the meter, the liter, the gram, and it's one. Here we have our first power of 10, so it's like one zero. Here that exponent means two zeros. Here it means three zeros, six. Nine. So here we're going up by one. Now we start making jumps by a power of three, right? So 10 to the sixth, to the ninth, to the twelfth, to the fifteenth. And so that's kind of standard that way. And then the same thing here. The first three change by a power of one, and then we go to the to negative three, negative six, negative nine. Right? We're not going to get into all that. Um, just as you look at these prefixes, where have you heard the mega, the giga, and the tera before? Somebody tell me, Zach, give me one of those. Uh, storage on devices. Good. Devices, maybe your Xboxes, maybe your phones, maybe a memory card, maybe your computer. Right. So all of those technologies store um, data in those gigabytes or megabytes, or if it's a lot, maybe even a terabyte. I know like I have a four terabyte um, uh, external hard drive that I save things on, um, so it can hold a lot of data. Um, and so we also go really, really small, like the micro or the nano, okay? And so you might have heard of a nano chip. You think that nano chip is big or small? small. Yeah, if they're using the prefix nano, that's a, a really good sign that it's something teensy tiny, okay? So 
just be happy that we're just learning the six, um, but know that there are more out there. All right, so here's some prefixes, um, or excuse me, abbreviations. Um, <clears throat> so the meter is the M, the G is the gram, and the L is the liter, so capitalize the L. Again, if you put, if you put um, like that, sometimes it gets confusing. Or like if I have, I think I gave you the example the other day, if I mean 11 liters, I know that that means 11 liters. If I do this, and that's supposed to be my liter, that looks like 111, okay? So it's just good practice to make that L capital. Um, and anytime you're dealing with a liquid, you are dealing with the liter for volume. If you're dealing with a solid, then it would be some version of your length cubed. So the meter cubed, the centimeter cubed, um, possibly the kilometer cubed, something like that. All right, so the K is our thousand, the H is our hundred. Notice how it has two letters. For our deca, right, because this is our kilo, this is our hecto, this is our deca, right? Notice that you um, see two letters for the prefix. The reason why is because there's also another D over here with the deci. I try to stay away from the, the D altogether. We're really going to look a lot at these four. The hecto and the deca are not used a whole lot. Um, they're not super common. Um, we won't, we won't, I usually am not going to have like the D's on there at all just because people are always like, is it the deci or the deca? Here's how I remember it or keep it straight. The deca is 10. Okay, so the deca is 10. The deci is a tenth. Well, 10 is much bigger than a tenth. And so to represent the deca, it's the big one. I use two letters. The deci is the smaller value, and so it just needs one letter to represent it. But again, I try to stay away from them all together. Um, we can't just be like, hey, we don't use the hecto and the deca and the deci a whole lot, so I'm just going to get rid of them because that messes up our steps, right? Because if these are going down by a power of 10 or moving up by a power of 10, we don't want to take those out because it would mess up our, our scale, our, our, our steps as we go. All right, so we have to remember that King Henry um, died unexpectedly drinking chocolate milk. So we need all of those, but we're not really going to use these three a whole lot. Um, just, and honestly, they're not really, usually we're not measuring things in a hectoliter or a deciliter. Usually, you know, we're dealing with a version of the kilo or our base. Um, so again, two letters for the big one, deca, a single letter D for the deci because it's the small one. And it would have been nice if they had picked different letters, but the reason why, what do you know, do you know a word that kind of sounds like deca that is dealing with 10 of something? A decade. Very good. So that's where the 10 comes from. It wasn't just like a random, <clears throat> let's pick, um, you know, a prefix. They picked the prefix that represents 10. So deca um, means 10. So decade is meaning 10 years at a time. Okay. Um, okay. Let's go on. So probably tomorrow, you guys, we're going to have kind of an odd class getting pulled because of pictures, right? I'm guessing unless they start with seventh grade and it takes all the first period, we might get interrupted tomorrow. Um, so we're going to just do some random practice that people can kind of come in and come out of and not like be missing anything major. You'll just be, um, when you're here, you'll be practicing, and when you're not, you'll be smiling, getting anticipated. Um, we're going to do a metric sort, and it's going to be similar to this. 
Um, actually, years ago, Mrs. Johnson used to be in my room, and she doesn't come see me anymore. She's not allowed. And so that we're not allowed to work together anymore. No, not really. Um, but she isn't in my room anymore. But she did a lot of cool things when she was here. And one of the things she did was she took this chart um, and made a bunch of copies and then cut these all up. So she, we have baggies that have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. So we have 40 pieces. And you're going to kind of recreate this chart. And it doesn't have to look exactly like this. But for the prefixes, the symbols, the factor number, and the factor word, um, so like this is like the value and then this is like the written out word is all that means. And you're going to kind of put things together. So recognizing that kilo and K and 1000 go together. And recognizing that hecto and the, pre the abbreviation H mean 100. Um, and so that's kind of like putting this together. Notice how they say DA or DK. Not only do the Ds have, there's two of them. But the DECA has two different ways. Now, one reason why we don't use, this gets everybody all worked up usually, if I'm using DA for this, then I would have the DAL, right? I would have the DAG for a DAG, and then I would have the DAM for a meter. And so sometimes people get like, oh, Mrs. Tobin's cussing, she's saying damn. D-A-M, the decameter, okay? So typically you're going to see it more like this with the D-K, but just realize that science likes to be, keep everybody on their toes, and sometimes things can be a little bit even more confusing by offering multiple ways to represent the same thing. And so this is one of those situations. We have the D-A or the D-K as the abbreviation. Again, I'm gonna pretty much try to stay away from the D's altogether just to avoid that confusion. Because um, I don't, I like to test what you know, not what you were confused on, or like how I can kind of confuse you by giving you the most weird random things. So try to stay away from those two. Um, but again, the Desi, and the other thing is when I say Desi, it kind of reminds me of the word decimal, and Desi represents the first decimal um, value. So that also helps me kind of keep the deca and the deci straight. So the deci kind of sounds like decimal. All right. Um, okay, so to kind of give you a, a mental picture, sometimes um, a lot of you are very visual. So like when I look at this, I see the kilo. Um, kilo kind of reminds me of killer, like killer whale. How big is a killer whale? Is it big or small? Yes. Pretty big, right? Compared to most animals, it's a pretty decent size. So, kilo, killer, big. Where have you heard, probably not super appropriate to talk about it all the way in school, but where have you heard kilo used, like maybe in TV or a song? Kilo and a thousand pound sisters on TLC. Oh, <laughs> okay, that's new. No, I have not heard that. Way to be honest, Zach. What else? Good. Look that up. <laughs> um, I wouldn't know. It. No. <laughs> okay, I won't. <laughs> what? Where have you heard Kilo used? Maybe like on like talk shows or parts in movies. What'd you say? Drugs, right? They found a kilo of cocaine, or they found a kilo of heroin. That's obviously yeah. yes. This is a lot, which is why like they are talking about it like as a big bust, probably. Um, you know, that is definitely intent to, to distribute or sell, right? And so, yeah, you've probably heard that. You've heard that term used. So when they're talking a kilo, they're talking a kilogram of that product or whatever it is they're describing, okay? Um, all right, so the killer whale, that kilo. Um, so the, I have some notes in case, because sometimes I forget my little reminders. Don't want to skip anything. Um, let's go to um, the, and then we talked about the deca being like the decade, right? And then, so for the, um, the deci, again, it sounds kind of like decimal. Centi, right? When we get down here, centi, how many pennies are in a dollar? 100. Okay, 
So one penny out of a dollar is one hundredth. One cent or one penny is like a hundredth of a dollar. If it takes one hundred of those to make the dollar, one of those is a hundredth. So centi kind of sounds like cent. We know it takes a hundred cents to make that one dollar. So if we imagine that this meter stick is my dollar, and I break it up into 100 equal pieces, right? That's what each one of these centimeters is. Each centi is one hundredth of the entire meter. So this centimeter is a hundredth. This centimeter is a hundredth. This centimeter is a hundredth. Okay? So if you think of it like that, sometimes that helps as well. Um, let's see. I think that that is the majority. Okay, let's take a look. Um, and again, these are the things that you're going to need, that the milli is the prefix, the M is the abbreviation, the value is the point zero zero one. Um, one more thing, the milli kind of sounds like a millipede. Millipedes, did you say that? I was talking about centipedes and millipedes. Okay, good. Um, so the millipede is super tiny, has all those legs, right? And so um, the milli kind of sounds like millipede, um, talking about all those tiny little legs, and it's the smallest one that we're going to deal with. All right, let's go back. Um, let's listen to our song.